What's going on guys? We are headed out to a package unit repair. It's like a nine-year-old Bryant package unit. Has a bad TXV, which is partially restricted. I think it was running like 88 suction, about a three, 350 head with about 40 couple superheat and 20 couple subcooling. But we're headed over there to replace that TXV. It also has a leaking Cormax fitting, one of those quick charge, uh, factory charge fittings. So we are going to do something with that. Probably put in like a a little stub port or something, but we'll figure that out once we get there. But we are right down the street. So we're gonna swing over here and try to get what video I can for you. Um, should be a pretty straightforward, pretty relatively simple repair, but We'll try to get all the video we can for you, so stay tuned and we'll see what we get into. Alright guys, so this is our patient for the day. It's a Bryant system, 2009. As you can see, got a little bit of ice on it. But our TXV is bad, so we're going to be replacing this TXV. You can see our coil is not frozen just our TXV and uh, distributor tubes are frozen. We're also going to be replacing or fixing or getting rid of that Cormax fitting back there. Uh, what else are we going to do? We are going to clean the condenser coil because it's pretty filthy. They have some dogs that bed down out here. You can see the bones and everything. So all their dog hair gets sucked up into this coil. It's made it pretty filthy. Evaporator coil is nice and clean. Blower is nice and clean so we don't have to worry about those. But uh, TXV dryer, coil clean, and we're going to add a drain line to this unit because <laughs> it doesn't have one for some reason. So we're going to add that while we're here. But holds about nine and a half pounds of 410. So I'm going to go ahead. Got some of my stuff over here now. But we're going to start uh, getting this thing recovered down and get to working. So I'll get as much film as I can for you. All right, guys, so we got everything recovered now. I went ahead and cut the uh, 3 8 line on the TXV. I'll just sweat this little stub off of there so I can reuse this factory 3 8 pipe. Got our cork tape off of our sensing bulb. Just have to loosen that uh, hose clamp up there that they're using to hold that sensing bulb on. And that should be about it for the expansion valve. The only tricky, semi-tricky part is where they put the equalizer tube. Super convenient right there right up against the uh, frame of this where the condenser rests so that might be slightly tricky to unsweat out of there but shouldn't be too bad and more than likely since the expansion valve sits in front of this dryer I'm gonna replace the dryer before I put the new expansion valve in just because of the design so I don't have to wrestle around this expansion valve trying to get a new dryer in behind it and once I get the dryer out I'm going to look in to see what we're going to do to replace this Cormax fitting up there. Alright guys, we got that expansion valve out. What I'm going to end up doing with the uh, equalizer tube up there is I decided instead of fighting with this tray that's in the way, I'm just going to do like I showed in one of my, one of my brazing videos, is I just went ahead and cut the equalizer tube. I'm just going to sleeve a small section with a quarter inch piece of copper and not have to worry about that uh, where it stubs into the suction line since that's a pretty crappy design makes it difficult to get to this will be far easier so that's what I'm going to do now um, excuse me what I'm going to do now is sounds like there's a lot of oil down inside of here so I got my nitrogen hooked up of course so I'm going to open that up and try to blow anything that's in there out and uh, then I'm going to take that dryer out and then we will look at the uh, Cormax fitting back there but got my nitrogen turned on behind me so I'm going to fire it up and see what comes out of this because I could hear it gurgling not sure if you can hear that you can kind of see a little bit of stuff coming out as you can see I've got the new or got the old dryer out ready for the new dryer I went ahead and unsweat the Cormax fitting back there which is right here it's just dirty because I tossed it down in the grass when it was hot but 
what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use one of these little test stubs and basically do the same thing. It's the same diameter, 3 8 and you can see it was stubbed into the pipe roughly about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to mimic that with this fitting right here. And what I may end up doing is I may end up just cutting it a little bit shorter. I'll just kind of see how it, how it looks in there. But that's the game plan to eliminate that Cormax fitting. We'll just use this, uh, this little test stub, 3 8 stub. And solder her back in or braze her back into there. And then I'll go ahead, like I said before, after that I'll put the filter dryer in, the new one. Then I'll put the TXV in. And I'm only, again, only doing that just because of the way this configuration is. It's just going to be easier for the repair. Well, that worked out pretty well. I was able to get that braze in there. And that's going to have plenty of room to hook any smart probe or refrigerant hoses up in there. So that worked out really well got everything back in the unit everything's brazed in I may lose my super tech card I'll have to have to check with the powers that be if you look at that filter dryer back there I did uh, scorch the paint a little bit the bottom side which I don't know if you'll be able to see is uh, done really well not burn at all because I used the Viper wet rag on there the top side, I was chit-chatting with the customer, got sidetracked and completely forgot to put it on there. So, But have no fear, I do carry spray paint. So if in the event you ever do cook the paint on a filter dryer, it's not a huge deal. Um, I just spray paint over it. Also carry a piece of plastic so I can just wrap it behind there. So I try to keep all the paint on the part that I'm trying to paint. But you can see I tapped into our equalizer tube with a piece of quarter inch so I didn't have to fiddle with that stub that's up here just like I did in a previous video so if you want to see exactly how that's done go check that video out um, other than that just got to put this thing under pressure well, we got her on a pressure test now Not sure if you can see that where's the screen here 356 so let that sit for 15 or 20 minutes make sure it holds all right guys it's been about 15 minutes now pressure still basically the same 356.3 I think that was about what it was so we're not dropping any pressure at all so I'm gonna go ahead and get the vacuum set up this is just gonna be a single hose evacuation since I still have one of those core max fittings on the suction side but I'll go ahead and hook my micron gauge to the suction side, hook my Appian hose with my valve core remover to the discharge line, and we'll just single hose evacuate since this is a package unit. It really shouldn't uh, shouldn't be that bad. As you can see, I put uh, our trap in there and, uh, yeah, tried to dig out a little bit of a channel. Customer said they're going to dig this out and, I guess, uh, put some sort of French drain or something in, so... Um, yeah, that's all they wanted me to do for now is just put a trap so it actually drains. But that's where we're at now, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up the vacuum setup and we'll get evacuating. Alright guys, system's been on a vacuum for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Gotten everything pretty much buttoned back up. Got the sensing bulb insulated with some cork tape. Uh, remounted the crankcase heater, defrost stat, wired the compressor in, moved all the distributor tubes around so they're not touching anything. Sealed up the top of that filter dryer, pulled the fan off, getting ready for my coil clean. And like I said, I'm going to wait until I get finished with the vacuum, weigh in the nine and a half pound factory charge, then I'm going to put these doors on before I clean it. Because another crappy design is any of the water that gets in the top of this air, uh, the top of this package unit, it drips off of this little lip and drips down in the electrical compartment. So I'm going to uh, wait. To clean the coil until I get all the doors and everything back on but typically at this point I show you guys a screenshot of my blue vac pro the evacuation decay test all that kind of stuff for whatever reason since I've done the latest app update anytime the app loses connection it starts over it no longer stores the data so that'll be something that they'll probably have to fix on the next update so I'm gonna try to show you the screen again another 
crappy design is you can't get the micron gauge in a decent spot but hopefully you can sort of kind of see this I'm trying to block it so you can see 360 some odd microns it's difficult to see but just wanted to make sure I showed you that but again everything's coming along pretty well pretty smooth so I'll give it another 10 minutes or so, then I'll do a decay test, isolate it, give it about 10 minutes, make sure we don't rise above 1,000 microns, and we'll be weighing in the factory charge and cleaning this coil. All right, guys, I went ahead and put the electrical door on. I decided to leave the uh, compressor door off because it's pretty muddy down there, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that out too. Might as well clean everything. I'm not a big fan of half-assing things, so... But what I'm going to do first, pretty straightforward, just like any other coil clean. Went ahead and uh, start brushing everything, get the loose stuff off, the hair, all that good stuff. And uh, then we'll go ahead and hit it with the Viper foam gun, which I'll be posting a review here in the next week or so. And we have it on the C setting, which is a 32 to 1 mix. And we are using the Viper heavy duty coil cleaner. But I'm going to go ahead and brush this thing off and we'll go ahead and clean this up. Again, there will be a review posted here soon on the uh, Viper foam gun, so stay tuned for that. And right, guys, just rinsing everything off now. See, our coil looks much better. I've got her pretty cleaned up. Got the compressor cabinet cleaned up. Cleaned up all the crap that was inside of here. See that real funky side cleaned up really nice. But this was the design that I was referring to. Anytime there's water on this, it just runs down over top of these cabinets. So it makes it a pain when you're checking these units, especially since they're heat pumps in wintertime where you're getting condensation come off these coils. But it is what it is. So I'm going to finish rinsing this thing off, put it back together, and we're just about ready to fire up. Right, guys we are pretty much finished with this repair everything's up and running got the factory charge weighed in of nine and a half pounds in this package unit you can see our numbers there i'll include a picture of the previous numbers but we're looking a lot better now just uh letting everything steady out waiting for this thing to drain and we'll be good to go so figured i'd just sit over here and uh Talk to y'all for a second, show you the pressure so we don't have to hear that compressor running. But all I got to do now is put on that compressor door and, uh, yeah, write up some paperwork and we're headed to the next one. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, apologize I couldn't get more of the actual work done. But when you're dealing with that small cabinet over there, it's a pain in the butt to uh, get a good angle on filming without being in the way while you're doing the work. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.